Today I'm in front of you with yet another horrifying story and incident from Pakistan. Of course, we are always speaking about human rights concerns in the country and social justice linked stories. We have with us Mary James Gale who joined us on a very short notice. Mary is a former MPA of Punjab Assembly. Mob attacks in Jarawala Tehseel of Faisalabad in which we've seen at least eight churches attacked, vandalized, desecrated and a few set on fire. What I see today this is this is going to be way more damaging and uh, in terms of the damage uh, it has done not just to Pakistan but to the Pakistani Christian community that is already marginalized the people telling that it's it's not just one two three churches we are talking about at least 11 churches that have been burned and I don't know how we can we what we can do about it and and after seeing it today I, I feel like I'm privileged in so many ways but I can see I can clearly see that it, at some moments I have to keep my mouth shut. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to New Wave Global. I'm Rabia Mahmood. Today I'm in front of you with yet another horrifying story and incident from Pakistan. Of course, we are always speaking about human rights concerns in the country and social justice linked stories. But the incident that we're going to be speaking about today is as horrifying as it is. Unfortunately, it's a recurrent incident in the country. Similar incidents have been taking place for years and years. And every time we see something like this happen um, in any part of the of Pakistan, we're just sort of dumbstruck by how horrifying and violent it is. And yet there seems to be no solution or end to this, uh, to such attacks. What we're going to speak about are the mob attacks in Jarawala Tehseel of Faisalabad, in which we've seen at least eight churches attacked, vandalized, desecrated, and a few set on fire. This is at least eight churches. The number is higher if you speak to the local activists on the ground. And all of this happened due to um, allegations of desecration of Islamic scripture. Uh, so allegations of blasphemy, which are fully unverified. And, uh, and again, this is also not the first time that this has happened in the country that an un uh, unverified allegation of blasphemy or even just a mere accusation leads to uh, violent attacks on someone's life or mostly disproportionately targeting the Pakistani minorities or attacks on worship places or their households. In Jaramala, we've seen one Christian colony being attacked initially because of uh, blasphemy allegations against two brothers. And then we saw that attack, that vandalized, that violent attack widely spreading across the city and then it reached other neighborhoods and then other churches as well. We have with us Mary James Gale who joined us on a very short notice. Mary is a former MPA of Punjab Assembly from uh, 2013 to 2018 and she's also the executive director for Center for Law and Justice and a lawyer herself. Mary, thank you so much for joining us. We know that you're exhausted today and you're also very tired at the moment yet another horrifying incident that has taken place this year what do you have to say about this this has echoes of what has happened before in Gojra in Joseph Colony in Yohanabad yes uh, thank you very much Rabi I thought I I would be uh, you know sane enough to to uh, comment on what I saw today but I'm so sorry I, I cannot and and even comparing it with other incidents does not make sense because what I see today, this is this is going to be way more uh, damaging. What I saw today, uh, not with my own eyes, but thanks to social media, the, the kind of uh, pictures, images coming up and how people responded to that and how the police response, as usual, it was it was very uh, poor, but but nothing, nothing as unusual. Uh, the only thing that I saw unusual was that it it's still going on and and not it did not end up with just burning off a whole neighborhood, but at least three neighborhoods came into, you know, uh, they they uh, they they were also uh, part of this damage and uh, as yeah, the people telling that it's it's not just one two three churches we are talking about at least eleven churches that have been burned alive. 
dozens of holy bibles they have been uh, these have been dis desecrated and and to be to be very honest it's not new we should be immune to these images we should we already are uh immune to this kind of attitude because when you talk about respect for other religions it means the religion of the superiors it means the religion of the majority and and it means the uh the respect of only one book that we call we call holy quran not nothing nothing matters we have seen other places of worship being vandalized the same way but here the kind of hatred we we can clearly see in people's eyes and how they were like again the same pattern it's it's a recurring pattern we have seen this today with with more rigor that's that's the saddest part i mean this this really aches my heart that how how we can we can we can reduce this hatred where this is coming from we we uh, i'm unable to to rationalize that this kind of hatred towards a religion that is also called a religion you know you you i mean that majority believes that it is people of the book we are we are you know uh, it's it's not uh, other religious minorities. Of course, they face they face the similar kind of uh, attitude. But here, and this this narrative we keep hearing. I mean, I really hate to say that, but how can you even compare it to what what's happening to the minorities in India and people? Of course, one part of the society is clearly uh, uh, in 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 pain, and and they cannot simply justify what has happened and they're trying to you know stay in solidarity but but the other part is clearly trying to compare it what's going on in india with, with muslims so does that make sense does that does it justify what the state is about what's what what state is doing what police is doing that was not just created for for muslims but muslims who were in minority muslims who were marginalized muslims who were treated as untouchable all minority groups that supported Pakistan. So, so that narrative needs to to be clarified, but at least by the state. That is it. Is this okay. what you want? Is... Um, so, um, yes, Mary. Like you've said, that it's uh, it's while the it's a recurring pattern, but it's an escalation of what used to happen because it's not just one settlement or neighborhood. This is spread out across the Tehsil and in various uh, neighborhoods, at least three settlements. Um, and you're uh, you're speaking about hatred, right? And how sort of, uh, uh, you know, visible it was and how much anger and hatred existed in that mob. We've seen the footage and uh, coverage and people are openly calling for execution of those who have allegedly um, desecrated the scripture. I must clarify that when we said that these are unverified, uh, in unverified claims, I didn't say that if there are verified claims, you can do anything. This is not an endorsement of the law. This is not an endorsement of uh you know um, attacking people for their religious expression or something i'm just quoting what happened in the incident so but i have a i have a question you spoke we we were looking about, uh, at extreme hatred we've seen escalation in that hatred it has always been happening because there were incidents which happened before the tlp came into power and got uh, strong but we've seen that TLP has emerged as a cause of or as an instigator or inside in, as a insider behind a lot of these incidents so and we see that in uh, Faisalabad as well that they were people who were continuously chanting slogans of uh, TLP and using it as a justification so what is your sort of, uh, you know, you've been speaking to people today and previously also you've been researching this, your organization. How how terrifying it is for uh, the communities on the ground, not just in Faisalabad, but otherwise as well, since the TLP has gotten stronger. Can you please tell us something about that? Well, Rabia, to be very honest, yes. it it's It's been hard but i must say it it hasn't been that hard uh, i'm i'm a guardian of an a 19 year old daughter and from my experience i'm not talking about other people they must have gone through really bad mm -hmm. but i had to teach her since since she 
got, got out of uh, the missionary school, I had to teach her. And that was the, the most peaceful days when she was uh, in, a, in a boarding that, was, uh, that, that had a missionary faculty. I had to teach her because she was trained in a different environment. And when I, she was uh, transitioned to to uh, uh, an elite elite school in Lahore, I had to. It was very difficult for me to make her understand that she cannot speak, no matter how how bad she's been treated, no matter if there is any verbal violence, no matter if they say anything against her religion, her faith, or anything she she's sensitive about, she must keep her mouth shut. She has been very. Uh, I mean, she has been trained to speak her mind, but for last two years, uh, those have been the most traumatic years for me because I was not horrified for for me because I knew that I I, I was trained to uh, to 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 be muted if if needed. Although I have been very vocal, but in past few years, I have felt like I should not. It's it's I I want to live here. I want to work here. This is this is my country and. Despite the fact my family is very, uh, you know, is fearful that I, I should leave. I, I chose to stay here. But for her, I, so, so how can I say it's, it's, it's different for other people? And the rising hatred, it has reached to the places where it, it hadn't been. We always mm -hmm. felt like people from the elite class, people from the upper caste, up, up, you know, upper classes, they have been sane and they have been vocal and they we could talk to them uh, openly, but that's not the case anymore. You can find sympathizers in all classes, in all characters, and this is the most fearful part. And I don't know how we can we what we can do about it. And and after seeing it today, I, I feel like I'm privileged in so many ways. But I can see I can clearly see that it, at some moments I have to keep my mouth shut i am sorry for cutting you here but uh, we understand what your the sort of the kind of uh, what you're trying to say in terms of you know how scary it is just for you as a guardian of uh, a daughter and it's reached people's homes and uh, you know and the uncertainty while dealing with people who are not from your faith but i have a you know you're mentioning state i really wanted to speak to you as a last question about your own time as a parliamentarian so you've been a part of a government of of one party but you're familiar with how these things are even if that was a couple of years back can you just like tell us as to why you think the the all parties have just failed to counter this ex the extremist ideologies uh, you know and uh, are they not interested is it just superficial or are they only interested in superficial level why i had the experience of of uh, dealing at least 20 similar incidents that would have turned into Jarawala incident. And I'm not bragging about it, but my sole intervention helped them prevent uh, such such incidents. And that was only possible because with the, with the government, with the bureaucracy, uh, with the then chief minister's office, I was in complete coordination and I could see that with police officers' response, we could prevent. We... Okay some 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 examples we said we uh, because it's the first hand experience i could see that people they this they, they could have been bigger tragedies but we could evade just because there was there was and and to be very honest no government would want to get into such kind of trouble that but but the problem is that it has been the individual's response that Avoid, that could avoid or prevent such kind of intervention. There hasn't been any institutional mechanism, any institutional response, because there is there, there are not enough preventive measures. It's only after the incident happens. Proactive, mm. you know, you, so, so many civil societies have been trying to put an early alarm system, something that could, because we, I mean, if I could get the information that this is going to happen, how come the intelligence agencies and other, you know, government institutions could not? So, so the the only thing I think, and and to be honest, politicians, yes, on the other hand, even if the leadership is very uh, much willing to avoid any any um, any such uh, tragedy, and I, I I could see that there were, you know, people who wanted to to add to 
to amicably resolve such situations. But then they are afraid of people. They are afraid of more. And they do not have any immediate solution to that. The more men mentality that has been developed over, over the decades, they are fearful and they, they, are, they are fearful of losing that vote bank they might have. So the representatives at the local level, even if they don't want to, I mean, in I put myself several times in, in dangerous situations. I and my colleague Asa, we had been, you know, reporting and we we, we were trying to to see what we we might prevent, but but then politicians they did not want to get in the middle of what people were thinking. So if there is a minority community, so 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 for me it is understandable that there's a small vote bank of the minority communities, and then there is a larger population that that believes otherwise. Where would they go? Where the where there's bigger vote bank, and that lies with 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 the mob. So even if they in their hearts they, they be, believe they do not have enough power and courage to say no, and I must. You know, there 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 are uh, extremely talented and brave police officers uh, we have had, we still have, who try their best to avoid such situations, but they seem powerless because there is no such institutional support that is needed. There is the law enforcement agency. Why we need rangers? Why we need you know other law enforcement agencies? It means police and the or the right force. There is some lacking, and we have what we have recently identified. They are not trained to think empathetically towards such issues. Their own ideology, their personal ideology overpowers them. And, and if we have people in the police force, in the right force, in, in other state machinery that is supposed to prevent such events, if they think that this is the natural response of the mob, and, and of course their lives are also at stake. So if they do not have institu enough institutional support that is required, this, this will not end. Okay. Yes, and you very rightly raised the issue of having the right intelligence at the right time. You know, unfortunately, the Pakistani intelligence agencies are busy elsewhere. This is some somewhere where you know uh, they could be use of their um, skill sets. Um, and uh, thank you for giving us your perspective based on your own experience as an MPA and having intervened in a number of cases. Uh, uh, thank you for speaking to us on such short notice. This was a quick interview uh, to get your insights uh, about the Jarawala incident. Um, and to our viewers, thanks for watching. We'll be uh, following up on this story and keep bringing you more insights and information from the ground. Khudafis.